Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lucor Automotive. Today, we're tackling another engine teardown. And interestingly, it's an AMC for the same car I just tore down a 304 for. So let me explain myself to myself and to you. You saw me recently tear down a 304. It was the original 304 for my 1979 AMC AMX. Now, what we discovered when we got inside of that motor was it's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, despite the layer of disgusting that was on the outside, the mechanical components and all of the actual pieces and parts on the inside were actually pretty good. It seemed like somebody had rebuilt it recently and then driven a little bit and then parked it and forgot about it. And then it got covered in 10 years of disgusting. Now, this is a 1973 AMC 360. The reason I bought this and the 1973 Ambassador that it came out of, which hopefully you saw me terribly tear down recently, um, was because everybody in the AMC world has said, don't bother building the 304, just build a 360 and stick that in your AMX. Well, I'm new to the AMC and AMX project, so I'll bite. It seems like it's a much better platform. So I, uh, I found one, I'm gonna tear it down and see what I got, and then we're gonna see what I've got. Now, a couple of things that are about this motor that are better than the 304, pretty much everything. So uh, if you wanna see what this looks like, if you wanna see how this whole process goes, stay tuned, I'm about to tear this thing down. Now I understand this looks terrible. Uh, this car basically hasn't been taken care of for a decade plus, very similar to my 79, and it's gross. But the block is probably pretty good because these things are pretty stout. It's only a 76,000 mile original car, um, and nothing that I can see seems like it was really messed with, except this is a four barrel Edelbrock carburetor with an electric choke this is a Performer AMC aluminum intake, four barrel, of course. So the reason I bought this particular car and this particular motor is the fact that this intake and this carburetor are worth, I don't know, $250, $300, somewhere in that range. Uh, if I'm buying them retail original, they're $600, $700. So I'm pretty well ahead of the game with this, and it gives me all of the bottom end. Now, the nice thing with the AMCs is they're a little bit Lego-like, where I can swap pieces and parts back and forth between them. So this intake manifold will work on a 304, a 360, a 390, a 401. Essentially, almost any, every AMC I want to stick it on, this will travel along with it. So if it ends up being that my bottom end or something along these lines is destroyed and not worth rebuilding, all right, so I overpaid for the intake manifold, but that's about it. I may have some good parts here that I can really use. The crank and the rods out of a 360, identical to the 304, so we'll see. Um, it's at least interesting. What I'm going to end up doing with this is still a little bit up in the air, and I say a little up in the air because I haven't entirely talked myself into or out of what I'm planning on doing. In my mind, what I'm going to be doing is, if that 304 is in good shape, I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna put it in the car and I'm gonna run it this year. And while I'm running that 304 around the track, I'm gonna be building this. Because I feel like I'm gonna get a little crazy on this 360 build, much more so than I would be on the 304. So, before I get to any of that, I need to take this thing apart and see what I've got. See if it makes sense, or if I'm just wasting money and time. But, it's after hours and I can do whatever I want. So step one is gonna be removing the exhaust manifolds, which are gonna be sketchy and may or may not come off, and the um, front engine cradle. Um, it's got the engine mount still bolted onto it, so I'm gonna kinda start taking apart the outside stuff, then I'll take the intake off, and I'll work my way through this. It's gonna be a couple of hours to get it all done. It won't take you guys a couple of hours to watch this, though. So, I'm gonna shut up, get started, and uh, probably get really greasy again. Ooh, the things I talk myself into. Here we go. Well, one, two, three, 
four have come out. That one, I can't get a socket on. And that one seems to be slightly different size. So we're gonna see if we can get a wrench on those. Keep moving forward, step one has to come apart. So we got the front ones loose, we got the back ones loose, we got this one loose. Unfortunately this one, which is supposed to be a 9 16 doesn't seem to fit a 9 16 So a 9 16 freely spins on it, half inch, doesn't fit over it. So we're going to try a 14 millimeter, see if we can, nope, not going to break it loose. That's going to strip the head completely off. So, time for some heat. Step one, not going well. Can't get this off, I can't just get this bolt off. Move on to the other side. Now, technically speaking, I can get this head off with the exhaust manifold attached. And that's probably what we're gonna end up doing. Because I don't think that's gonna come off. But, I'll get you done the other side. All right, now with the hoses off, we can see a little bit more of what that intake looks like. It's clearly quite scuzzy, but not terrible. Nice thing is, it's not really a wear item intake manifold, so it'll clean up nicely. There's your Edelbrock AMC Performer tag there. And uh, all of our exhaust manifold bolts came off except for that guy there which is quite clearly buggered. So, that is what it is. No big deal, the manifold can come off with the head. One tip, trick, from somebody who's screwed this up over and over again in the past, keep your nuts and bolts together. And keep them with whatever you take them off of. So in this case, I'm taking them off of this, so once I get this throttle plate off, I will put these back together again so I don't lose them. One thing you learn quickly when you just say, hey, I'll just put all brand new bolts in it is A, you don't remember which bolts are what, and B, gets really expensive buying all brand new hardware. That Pontiac behind me, 
I put all brand new ARP fasteners in there because I thought I was gonna be like, <laughs> let's just put all good new stuff in there. It's like $400 worth of bolts in that thing. It's like probably more than $400 worth of bolts in that thing. Stupid. Put your hardware back. Now this is a 1973, so it is the beginning of the smog era, uh, which is when lower compression really started to happen. So I'm sure this motor, when it was brand new, was probably a compression of like eight, eight and a half to one, somewhere in that range. It wasn't great, but 360 cubic inches, so it should have made a decent amount of torque. There have also been a whole lot of advances made in camshaft technology. Um, so just literally upgrading the camshaft, even leaving it on a low compression setting like this, uh, would make a considerable difference. I'm probably not going to leave it at eight, eight and a half to one, though. Clearly, there's a phenolic spacer here. So clearly somebody, when they did the carb swap and the intake swap, also did a phenolic spacer. Put gaskets on both the top and the bottom. So that's good. Well done there. This actually has seen a whole lot of exhaust back up through it. It's super carboned up. Actually, it's kind of cooked on the bottom, so I'm guessing this thing didn't probably run very well. And given I can see carbon in the intake manifold, I'm guessing this thing didn't run very well. Which hopefully doesn't mean we've got something going on with the heads, but we'll see. Now one thing to keep in mind, and I've said this in a lot of other videos, but if you haven't watched any of those videos, you haven't ever heard me say this, it's a good thing to plan your build and stick to the plan. The problem with running out of money usually comes in when you change your direction on your build. Is you have a great idea, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go for this many horsepower, this many foot-pounds of torque at this RPM, and then when you change your mind, that's when things usually start getting expensive. In my mind, when I'm taking this thing apart, the heads, eh, I may or may not ever use them. Chances are I probably won't because the cost to really fully rebuild a set of cast iron heads from this era is gonna get expensive. I can buy a brand new set of better than original heads that are aluminum, that have better literally everything in them um, for just a little bit more money than what I can rebuild these cast iron heads for. So in my mind, I've already got a, a plan going as far as what I'm gonna be doing with this thing above and beyond what I find here. So even if I do find some problems with the valves or who knows what, a cracked head maybe, um, it's not really the end of the game as far as the build goes because I've already kind of got in my mind, I'm probably going aluminum heads on this build. Another little interesting bit of wisdom I learned is on AMCs, it's very complicated to call it a numbers matching car because they didn't really do that. Um, on the passenger side valve cover on the very front here, there's this aluminum tag. And this aluminum tag will tell you essentially the production date of this motor. Um, but it doesn't really tell you much beyond that. There is a stamp on the side of the block, actually on this one, it's inside here. You can see where it says 360, it's inside the motor mount. Um, but it's very hard to nail down exactly what you've got if this was the original motor. Now, because of what I know, I know that this was uh, a motor that was built in January of 1973, and the car this came out of was a 1973, so at least the stick, the stamp on the valve cover is correct for the year of the car. Now that doesn't necessarily mean anything as far as whether or not this is the original motor in the car. I imagine it is, but I don't care. Just an interesting little bit of AMC knowledge.
Well, that looks nice compared to what the AMC 304 looked like when I tore it down. Somebody's clearly been in here and replaced a valve cover gasket in the not terribly distant past. Hey, you know what? This isn't looking bad so far. Look at that. Nothing in the valve covers at all. And in the head actually looks pretty reasonably good. Now the rockers are super loose. Now I will mention this uh, again because it's a teardown video. Something you need to make sure you do is have Ziploc bags. Every bolt you take off, put it back with the part you can, put it in a Ziploc bag. That way they don't get lost. Believe me, I've screwed this up before. <laughs> thermostat looks terrible. So, there's my thermostat housing, and there's my thermostat, which looks gross. Eh. It's not all terrible. As I said, place parts and bolts in bag. Thermostat housing, bolts for thermostat, in bag, stays together. Hey, 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 again, not bad shape. New-ish rubberized valve cover gasket. Not bad, not bad at all. Some of this stuff even still has AMC blue on it. All the valve cover pieces, all of the hardware, goes in a bag. So I don't cost myself a bunch of extra money, including the brace piece that holds the dipstick tube onto the back cover.
Mm. That's gross. Definitely going to be an impediment to the uh, cooling passages when you're covered in... I don't know what that is. Swamp thing material. Well, that doesn't look too bad at all. Well, some of these rockers are a little loose. Some of them are nice and tight. So rockers are definitely not in perfect shape, but not terrible on either side. It uh, doesn't look like I've got any broken or bent push rods, at least from initial looking. Only one of these lifters really looks like it's corroded much at all uh, in its lifter bore, which can be concerning because if it's corroded into the lifter bore, we could end up with a bad situation on the lifter bore where you end up having to, we don't want to talk about that. Um, interestingly, the casting flash down through into the cam tunnel looks like it's already been cleaned up. So again, this may be a situation where somebody else has possibly been in here. At least we know they did the intake manifold. Who knows about the camshaft? Um, but all things look like we're doing so far so good. Tell you what, if I can get two out of two really good AMCs, I'm going to become a much bigger fan of AMCs. I'm telling you, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. All right, take the rockers off, pull the push rods out, moving on. Did I catch that on camera? Yep. Definitely just dropped that box of rockers and nuts. All over the floor. So much for staying open. Push rods definitely look way better than the ones that came out of 304. Those ones were real scuzzy. These actually don't look bad at all. Um, now again, not going to use these, but if you find ones that are broke or bent, it can start to point you in directions of abuse or bad maintenance or what you may be finding inside a little bit further. So far, I'm pretty reasonably comfortable with this. Looks like my head casting number is 321-6080. Zero. Zero. So, same casting number on both sides. Yay, I've got matching heads! That's not always the case. Okay, 
Distributor drive gear. Actually, it looks really, really good. Now this piece about the Mallory <laughs> points ignition system uh, is a little concerning because it's, as you can see, not very well installed. Whatever. Well, after much consideration uh, between Rich and I, we've decided that that bolt over on that side for that exhaust manifold, we're just going to slag it because it's not worth the effort and excitement to try to remove it the proper way. And I don't care. Also, I'm not going to be using these manifolds. So if I do happen to damage the manifold, I still don't care. So I'm going to grab the flame wrench. That bolt's going to come out. Come on. I'm gonna do my best to not drop this on my foot. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hurt myself. Yeah. Yay me. Maybe not. <laughs> Why doesn't this ever work? Because you're a weakling. That, that's why you have a bolt in it. That is why we have a bolt in it. <laughs> and that is why we do that. Hey, look at that. Oh, that looks so much better than the 304. Let me move the camera around so you can see what we're looking at here. So, how are we looking? Pistons look better. Definitely some ring ridge on this one. It looks better than the 304 did. <laughs> That 304 was, somebody, somebody was somebody was just playing mean to that thing. Hey, your lifters move. That's really good. It'll be all right. Le valve wise, it's got some sunk valves. It'll definitely need a valve job. Yeah, it was sealed up good. Head gasket's intact. Good sign. It's a good start. On your feet, Austin. Don't drop it on your feet, Austin. Don't drop it on your feet, Austin. That would hurt on cloth tennis shoes. You would have flat toes instead of flat feet. Come on, head gasket. Get off. 
Oh, there's water sitting in that one. Dang it. Ah. It's rainwater. It, that's fine. It's way better than the other one was. I guess that's one way to remove it. Huh. Thanks. Here you go. Cleaned your bore. Now with the heads finally off this thing, we can have an honest, legitimate conversation here about what's going to happen with this 360. Am I going to reuse the 360 heads? Maybe. Um, they are considerably better heads than the 304 are. Even just in stock trim, they're much better than the 304 heads are. Um, bigger valves and essentially every way they're better heads. Um, the question really comes down to what's your end goal? Um, I could make those heads probably make some good power and get me close to what I want. It becomes a question of whether or not it makes sense to put money into those old cast iron heads. Because even though they are better heads than the 304, there are much better heads that are available that are aluminum. Um, and it, it, it becomes a question of cost, really. I mean, when you're talking about putting new guides and seats and uh, valves and springs and keepers and retainers and all of the stuff that goes into repairing a set of heads, um, it can get real expensive real fast. So you have some legitimate concerns about costs. And it's not always the smartest thing to rebuild an old junky set of heads, even if they're in reasonably decent shape, um, compared to just going to a set of aluminum. And the aluminums, a lot of times you, the phrase would be like, you could start the aluminum on like a, tier, like a level six versus you could get these to like a level eight. So the aluminum is gonna be better, generally speaking, than even a pretty well upgraded cast iron head. And depending on how much time and money you spend on porting and polishing and all of the extra fun bits in the heads, sometimes actually even end up being less expensive. Um, depends on the brand. Some things you could do that with, some things you can't. Water pump is actually in pretty good shape. I would say somebody's done a water pump on this thing in the not terribly distant past. It's got a stamp on the pump that says PH384. That definitely doesn't look bad to me. AM-8 on the inside. Hmm. Don't care, not keeping it to see what comes out of the oil. Well, it's at least oil.
oil pump drive gears actually look pretty good. And that's how it's done. The correct way. All right. So, this harmonic balancer actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's not pooched out like my 304 was. Uh, the ring seems to be pretty equal all the way around. It's not, uh, take that back. I uh, take that back. This does have a, Depression there, and it is pooched out here. So, <clears throat> what's that? Is that an AMC thing? So the question is, do you put an aftermarket balancer on it? Do you have this one sent out and fixed, you or do you just them. put it on? Yeah, they're like two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks. Right. Just accept the fact that you're going to spend money when you are shut up, Richard. The motor. I know. So that was another two hundred dollars. <sighs> oh. What Richard was showing back, throw, throwing back in my face there is off camera just moments ago we discussed the fact that when you're going into something like this, go into it with eyes open and the fact that you're just going to be throwing away certain things that are going to cost you money, like fuel pumps and other things like harmonic balancers. So now I get to buy two harmonic balancers. Ha, ha, ha. Covers off, yay! All right. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit too much uh, slop in the chain there. It's just a little bit. That's okay. We weren't planning on reusing the can anyway. We know it's destroyed. Timing sets, not that expensive. Again, it's just one of those things. You go into it realizing you're going to spend money.
Well, that doesn't actually look too bad. Telling you what, I'm feeling better and better and better about this whole building AMC's thing. So, there's definitely some junk in the pan, but it's not, it's not bad. And the ceiling surface of the pan seems almost perfect. I think it'll clean up perfect. Got a couple of pieces of oil pan gasket on it, but I think we're in real good shape here. I think oil pan wise, we're in real good shape. And the oil is not nearly as disgusting as the 304 was. Pull this thing over, make a big mess, and then uh, all the lifters will start falling out of the oil. I can start taking off the rotating assembly. As far as messes go, this is, I'm impressed. I normally make way bigger of a mess than this. <clears throat> Oil pickup actually looks pretty nice. Ooh. Let's get this off. I think I see some bearing material in this. Now it's getting scary. And now we're getting scared. You see these chunks of things hiding in this. There's one. There's a piece hiding in the screen. See that? Something has definitely come apart in this thing in the past. Uh, uh -uh. That's not a good sign. Something has definitely come apart in this thing in the past. I'm not gonna lose my motivation, even though I found some chunky bits in the oil pickup. Who knows what that means? Okay, don't lose heart. Keep moving forward. So pull the main caps off, put the crank pull back on so I can still rotate the crank, and start pulling all the rods and pistons out. We're almost done. Now I mentioned this in the 304 teardown, uh, and I'll mention it again in the 360 teardown here. On a lot of things, a lot of motors, when you tear them down, you need to use stamps and hammer those onto the caps, because you want to make sure you keep your caps where they're supposed to be. In the AMC world, they actually label these caps based on where their positioning is and which direction they're supposed to go. So that's extremely handy. I don't have to do any of that. Okay, moment of truth on bearings. Ooh, that, that one's a little out. That was a little. That was a little beat. You can see the radial marks here, and a normal bearing should be silver. Once you've run through the silver, you run into the brass part. And uh, you can definitely see where this one's been run down quite a bit. It's eaten something, which makes sense given we were seeing pieces in the metal. So, 
Could be worse, could be better. It's all right. Wasn't planning on reusing the bearings anyway. You can see in this bearing also the coloration. That's not silver. So bearings were definitely very well worn and there's no stampings on the opposite side. Like on the 304, it said Clevite on here where you can see this here. And that just says 319-6808 AMC. So these are the original bearings that were in this car. Okay, so these have an AM stamp on the side of them right here on the side of the piston. These are original rods, original pistons. Yeah, so we have an all original 1973 AMC motor. Good to know. Again, stamped one, stamped one. Cap, back on, bolts. Now do that eight times because it's a V8. So we'll do that in time lapse. Uh-huh. 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 Wanna know why I'm finding chunky stuff in that put in that oil pickup? Broken piston ring. Uh, my goal in this motor is going to be considerably more beyond what stock was, especially with the compression that this thing made from the factory. Uh, eight, eight and a half, it's just not going to cut it. So whether or not we end up we're using these rods, honestly, probably not. Um, for what I'm probably going to end up doing with this 360, they're not going to cut it. The pistons most definitely not going to cut it. But hey, at least I have a matching set of 360 rods and pistons. So everything else is out. I can pull the timing set off and uh, drop the crank out of this guy. And we've done our disassemble. Yeehoo! Timing set is off. 
<laughs> you plastic timing gear. Ugh. All right, let's get this crank. And very, very well, very well worn cap shaft. Ugh. Yeah. Lots of very well worn lobes. Definitely not going to be reusable. But that's okay. We weren't planning on reusing it anyway. So what have we seen so far in this teardown? Block is original bore. Uh, rods, pistons are all original. Bearings are all original. Heads seem to be pretty much all original. Somebody's definitely put an intake manifold and a four barrel carburetor on it. There's been a few things that have been sealed up with some RTV. Um, timing set, I believe, was probably all original based on how much wear we're seeing and the phenolic uh, gear. I mean, this seems like it was pretty much an unmolested other than an intake and uh, in a carburetor 360. So that's good news. Um, what we can't tell is whether or not the bores are going to be decent. There's a ton of meat you can cut out of these 360s to be able to make them a good bore, but that does mean you're going to be buying a new set of pistons, but we pretty much figured that anyway because we're going for a little bit more of a high compression piston. And uh, otherwise, so far, I haven't seen anything that really, really scares me, so that's a good thing. Um, I've got all of my stuff organized in case I ever really need to reuse any of it, but we don't know exactly what we're going to end up doing with this thing yet because it's still slightly contingent on what's going on with that 304. So, thanks for sticking around for the teardown on this 360. Next up is going to be cleaning all this junk and seeing exactly what we have and what kind of situation we've got ourselves into. And then uh, probably off to the machine shop with the 360. And the 304, we should have some news about that soon also, because it's currently at the machine shop. So, thank you very much for watching this far. We appreciate it as always. Please do click on that subscribe button. Uh, drop a comment in the comment section below as far as what you like, what you didn't like, what you think we should do with this 360, especially for a road race motor, what would you do? Would you stick with the cast iron heads? Would you go to an aluminum set of heads? Um, how much power is too much power? How much power is not enough? What makes sense to you? Ideas as far as camshafts go? Uh, I'm open to all information and probably some flaming because I'm sure I did at least two or three things stupidly. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Oh, there's some bearing material. Some cam bearing. There you go. Yeah. Cam bearings will come out. That's what I was finding in the. Uh, that's what I was finding in the oil. There we go. Cam bearings fell apart. Now that may have been from you pulling the cam. Was the this is exactly what I was saying in the in the was the camshaft hard for you to pull out or nope. okay so it slid right out yep okay, so nope. it probably was starting to have really low oil pressure because the cam bearings you're losing all that pressure to cam bearings yep there we go mystery solved looks like it's that guy right there.